Ready? Okay, so I want to talk about why Trump and Jesus both failed. Let's do it. Any reactions to that? Oh, not surprisingly. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I think they failed for similar reasons, mm -hmm. right? Because if you look at it, Christianity is has become one of the biggest mind control cults that's ever existed. And obviously there's many different branches and forms of it and everything, right? Um, to the point where you have someone like the Pope living in a gold palace, acting like he speaks on behalf of God, right? Yeah, um, it's pretty wild. And Jesus failed because he wasn't able to educate people. And so what I mean by education is supporting them to become equal to him so that they can see what he sees. Because the whole point of Jesus was that he came to earth to remind everybody that they were also gods like him. But he wasn't born with a mind consciousness system. So he was not able to relate to that. And he didn't explain to people how it works. So at the end of the day, he was saying, love your neighbor as yourself. But everyone, you know, is that exactly what he said? He just said that that's all he said. And he just left it at that. He didn't explain it. I mean, how many speeches do you think Jesus gave that they didn't record or write down? Yeah, the vast majority. There's just like a few that they put out there. And of course, they don't even put everything that's, that's you know, books, you know, that are uh, possible to be put in the Bible. They don't even put all of them in there anyways. But even what there was, like, they don't have very much. It's just like a few things, a few stories. And they were all written hundreds of years after he lived anyways, right? But the basic points of love your neighbor as yourself gives you one to receive, take what's best and leave everything else or investigate all things, keep what's best. Those basic principles, you can kind of interpret them in a lot of different ways, depending on the context, you know? But if you think just give as you want to receive means, oh, I'd like a hug. So I give people hugs all day. It's like, well, yeah, that's cool. But do you also want to live in poverty? Because lots of people in this world are in poverty and you're not giving them what you would like, which is what you have. You're obviously doing, you're more than willing to participate in the system so that you have it, but you're not willing to change the system so that they can have it too. Right. And of course, it doesn't really apply to the vast majority of people on earth because they can't do anything about it anyways. We're just talking to people like us who actually could hear it and do something about it and stand up and change. Right. So Jesus was really looking at how can you implement that as a system? No, I don't know if that's what he was thinking. But what I'm saying is that would be the actual application of his words. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Before. Perhaps he thought that if you just told everybody, they would wake up and we would all start just being really cool with each other. But clearly that's not the case if the system is constantly impulsing us to like fight for survival. And it took 2000 years for us to get to the point now to realize like, fuck, we need to like eliminate this whole struggle for survival point. What were you going to say, Jay? I was going to say before we get too far into it, um, you said Jesus was born without a mind consciousness system or he came without a mind consciousness system. Um, where would somebody listening to this go find more information on that? Because I know we're not going to get all into that, but where can but, we send them? I mean, that's DIP light in the simplest terms it's to explain what the mind consciousness system is. And then you can look at destiny to, I mean, there destiny, is a specific oh, art, uh, essay that I'm talking or article mm. where they explain it, it. Like if you're asking what, uh, like, I think Mitch's, your point was, if you actually want to understand how things work, that's DIP mm. and so forth. But there sure. is an article on, the destiny website that explains mm -hmm. like who Jesus was and everything. And I mean, I know someone can react to that and be like, Oh, so you just believe that about Jesus. Like, just read it. It makes sense. You know, even if it's just a story, it still makes sense. It doesn't really matter. The point is, can you take what's said and apply it in a way where it actually works? That's the real key. Mm -hmm. Right. But um, there's, if you just go search Jesus on the destiny website, like you'll find some articles written by him. All right. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> uh one thing i found really cool in this is like i was listening to um bernard pullman's explanation of like how he um went throughout his life and uh how destiny kind of emerged and he talked about how he was like you know devout christian raised in in that setting um, but he always had trouble um with that one part of the bible where jesus apparently cast out all those demons from the pigs and then the pigs ran into the or no he cast out demons and then they went into the pigs and then the pigs ran into the water killed themselves but then those demons just went out and like found new hosts and that bernard was always like wait like 
what that that part doesn't make sense like jesus failed in that sense and i had never even in in my own upbringing i mean i was raised lutheran very watered down christianity and it was like i never even questioned like how jesus may have failed in different ways um but now i see it very clearly and i think that's really cool actually like what bernard you know more the more and more that i've looked at him and listened to what he actually says it's like he really is coming at it with the same message of give as you'd like to receive operate from principle you know do the best thing um yet what's really cool is that bernard was around i mean he's passed away now for those who don't know but he's around in a time where he was able to uh, utilize things like the internet and technology to actually find different ways to fundamentally um, support human change mm -hmm. where they didn't have like back in the day i don't know what literacy rates were back two thousand years ago when jesus was around but i'm guessing it wasn't very high um but so he had like the sermon on the mount and things like that but nowadays i mean literacy rates still suck <laughs> the average person does not know how to read even if they pick up the book and can sound out the words it doesn't mean they're processing it um, but that's then where techno tutor comes in and dip and that's what's so cool about this time it's like we have this wonderful opportunity in front of us like we have all the tools it's all here so that we can actually um, empower people so that you know the average person can you know we can like collectively transcend what we've accepted in the past um but it's you know it's on us <laughs> like no no one's gonna come out of the clouds and save you trump isn't gonna like i mean we're even seeing that right now neither is bernard for anybody who thinks we're just worshiping bernard or some bullshit yeah know, or kevin like, trudeau he just got let out of prison everyone's like oh you hear kevin's out of jail it's like what the fuck have you been doing the past seven years they're like he's gonna release the secret teaching now it's like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh good <laughs> yeah so I, I think it's a really um wonderful opportunity that we have and there's kind of two options you either take it on fully and you apply what's best or you don't. And there's real consequence for that. So, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think they both failed because <clears throat> the people that they were speaking to could not hear them. It's like, if you are trying to tell a bunch of kindergartners, you know, how the, you know, teaching them about some really complex subject that there's no possible way that they could, you know, really comprehend and grasp because they haven't developed that ability to process that kind of information yet. It's like, why are you even speaking? <laughs> why are you trying to do this thing? And so the first step in that process is to make sure that the people you're speaking to can even process what you're saying. Like they have the vocabulary that you're using and they can, they know how you're putting it together and piecing it. And, the the way that someone can truly lead a group of people is to make sure that they can see exactly what you're saying so if if i if i tell somebody something and i can get them to see it the exact same way that i see it that is a true way to lead somebody because they're able to even understand what you're saying but without that point you will never never get a group of people to actually comprehend what you're doing I want to give a quick story um, that this from this morning, actually. Um, I was playing Legos with the kids. And so I like to make like, we always just make like little robots. You know, I just like put them together and then put eyes on them and stuff like that. And then they have little robots. And so this morning they, they went to go do something while we were on, a, while I was on a meeting earlier. And uh, Cindy, when she came home, she couldn't find the little robot. So she, she was playing with Max's. And so he was trying to help her find the one she had because he wanted to play with the one that I had made for him, right? And so she was walking around and we were trying to find it and everything. And uh, I don't, do you guys see those little masks that Katie made, those little fox masks? Not yeah. fucking coronavirus masks. Yeah. Like I'm talking like paper mache, like with yeah. eyeballs and stuff. They're like little masks, uh, fox masks, right? And so Max had picked it up off the ground and Cindy went over and grabbed it from him. And she was like, uh, um, like, I need that. I need that. I need that. Right. And I said, and I looked over at Cindy, I said, Seneca, you're being a little bit unreasonable right now. I said, um, we're trying to help you find the toy and Max is letting you play with the one that I had made for him. We're going to help you find yours, but now you're just taking the, the Fox mask from him when you have also this toy. Right. And, and she looked at me and she looked at, she looked down at the things and she goes, Oh, 
And then she goes, here, Maxie. And she gave him the, the robot toy, right? And all, I didn't scold her. I just said, I just pointed it out. You see what I mean? Yeah, like, hey, yeah, yeah. That's you know, so what you're cool. doing doesn't make sense. Um, so that's because- She's two for anyone who isn't aware. <laughs> yeah, like she just turned two in October, right? So it was not that long ago. Um, <laughs> but it's like, what we tend to do is just try to control. And so another way of approaching that would have been like, no, you already have a toy. You don't get a toy. That's not what I said. I just explained the context of the situation so she could make the decision herself. I didn't tell her to give her the toy back. She decided like, oh, and then she gave Max the toy. And then it was like, fine. And we kept looking for her, the other one, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's like, you know, cause you were talking earlier at that point about children and so forth, just before we started recording. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with leading a group or anything. You're going to be frustrated and constantly trying to control if you don't properly educate people. Mm -hmm. And education isn't just giving information. It's making sure that the person can also process it. Mm -hmm. should, that'd be better to focus on actually than just giving them the information because then they can go seek out the information. That doesn't mean you can't also give them information, right? But you want them to have the ability to like seek out information on their own. So it's not always dependent upon you doing it, right? Mm -hmm. And going back to the point with Trump, one difference I see with, with Trump versus Jesus, okay, is with Jesus, it was like he created followers because he was trying to tell them, hey, this is how you can make a difference. With Trump, what he did was instead of, he didn't create followers from the starting point of telling them a message, he created followers so that he could be in a position to make the change, right? But if anything, anyone should take away from it is if it's just Trump, like who is it that stopped him? If you think about it, because it wasn't an individual, it was the system. Mm -hmm. What could Trump not do? control the system yeah he couldn't change it you see what i mean he couldn't change the system mm -hmm. i'm not blaming him it just it just shows that i mean that's what everyone expected i didn't even think he'd i mean i knew he'd win the first time i knew he won the second time but the first time i thought they they were going to do what they did the second time to be honest like i was like well we'll see if it's actually rigged now and then he mm -hmm. got through and i was like holy shit you can actually do it but now it's at a point where okay that doesn't seem viable but that's only because he didn't have a, a real network that would stand up alongside him. You see what I mean? Everyone is in those positions is more um, beholden to the system. They want to protect the system. They're like, we're not going to protect this guy. We're going to protect the system. Mm -hmm. And I agree. We shouldn't be going just based on we are trying to protect this person, this personality. But the point is the system itself is not best. As you can see, I mean, look how it handled mm -hmm. the coronavirus and all that stuff. And that wasn't just because of Trump. You know, like the governors have more say in each state than, than a president does. And it still didn't really help everybody. Why can't the governors give money to everybody, right? So just like they do in Alaska, they have a, um, a basic income based on the oil money there in Alaska, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying the, the, the key major thing that I see, the reason why Trump failed is because he couldn't change the system. He didn't have enough people standing with him with principle to change the system. Yeah. Now, if it's only changing the system, just to take care of everybody, but then you're also not educating people at the, also that won't work either. So it has to be both. You see what I'm saying? It's not just about let's vote for a new group of saviors. It's let's have people who can go into the system and change it, but then also simultaneously start educating people effectively. I mean, that's how we're gonna get there in the first place is by having enough people actually understanding what's going on, having a generation of children who can actually process and understand what we're saying and they won't believe the fake news of, oh, you're trying to do this, that's because you're blah, 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 blah. They won't react to that. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? And that's be, been a, a huge point that I've seen is another, another thing that played into Trump failing is people are so easily manipulated by fear. Mm. I mean, that's why this whole thing during this 2020 occurred was because people were manipulated by fear instead of just common sense, uh, you know, using common sense. And it's like what happened the other day at the Capitol, right? It's being used at like, see, look, there was this violent insurrection that occurred and nobody wants to be associated with that. So they're like, oh, I disavow that. I don't support anything. Oh, I don't, I don't think we should even look into the potential election fraud or anything. No, it's like, uh, how can I describe it? It's like, 
I don't know if you guys saw it that way. It's just like, I could see it so clearly that happened. And they're like, Oh, you know, it totally changed my mind about it. You know, a lot of these yeah. senators and they're yeah. like, Oh, it totally changed my mind. Like, ah, it's like, wait, there actually is a problem. Like we need to really actually see if the election was transparent and if it really went that way. And they're like, well, because this happened, we don't need to do that. Anymore. What? They're not even connected. Right. In fact, yeah. if anything, that was happening, the insurrection type stuff or whatever, because you weren't doing it. So yeah. it doesn't even make sense logically why that would be the reason to not do it. But I don't also don't agree you should do it because people are being threatening and so forth. But it didn't have to even get to that point in the first place. It could have just been right. all open and transparent. It's, it's, it's compounding. Right. It's compounding on itself. Now what, you know, I don't know what's going to happen next. You know, it's what January tenth today or something. Well, and it, <laughs> it's it's separation. Literally, one they're putting it on one party saying this party thinks there's voter fraud and this party wants to investigate. This party doesn't think there's voter fraud and they don't want to investigate. Well, first of all, you don't want to investigate because your candidate got elected as the president. That's why you don't want to investigate. Right. Second of all, the validity of the process of putting somebody in power of the United States needs to be upheld. Like we need to make sure that this process actually was viable, that we could vote it counted and that there wasn't a bunch of fraud because even even if it's a possibility we should be investigating it we should look into it see if it actually happened not from the starting point of i want my candidate to win from the starting point of no i want our system to be valid because mm -hmm. at this point if that truly did happen that much voter fraud our system is completely corrupt your words mean nothing and you will never impact the system. The system will always control you if that's truly what it was. And yeah, and I it. think the real problem here is that this voter fraud has been going on for a long time. People have been assigned presidents and choices and so forth. And the fraud is just like cooking the books to make it look like it was people's choice, but it really wasn't their choice. And this has been going on for a long time. And that's why you had people on both sides saying they didn't want to look into it because it's, it's actually been how parties have been staying in power. But this is another reason why people have to be educated effectively because regardless of whether there's fraud or not, which I'm sure there was a lot of fraud in every election since forever, the bigger <laughs> problem is people are not voting based on actual common sense. Right. They're just voting on who can manipulate them emotionally. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not saying that that isn't a part of the process that we can just remove completely, but when you do that, the problem is those people don't really understand what you're doing. They just voted for you for some, because they got emotionally charged up. And if after the fact, at the very least, they're not supported to actually become stronger and stand up, like for example, just for example, um, how many people could actually stop working and then just immediately transition to making money? Like, because they're just natural born entrepreneurs or they just have that education. No. So to I, act like America is this land where everybody has an opportunity, well then how come, like what happened as soon as people couldn't leave their homes? Why wasn't everybody just like, oh, we're, we'll just build businesses online, bam, 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 bam. Right. Why didn't they cooperate? Why didn't they come together? Why, why was it like suddenly every man for themselves? Because that's not the actual education level of our average citizen, even in America, is actually very low. I, I, I know it's going to get us kicked off here. Um, so Mitch made a post about vaccines, right? And it was just like, it was just literally the Chicago Tribune, right? Yeah, and and it, it said... Uh, healthy Chicago doctor dies two weeks after receiving. COVID. No, he was, he was in Florida. He was in uh, Miami Dade oh, County. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. But he, he did die two weeks after taking it. Was, but it life. was the Chicago Tribune that was, that was writing yeah. it up. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and so it's so funny reading through the comments of everyone on there. Right. And there was literally someone saying, you shouldn't post this. You shouldn't repost this because it's going to make people feel like it's unsafe to take the vaccine. And it's like, and I, I, somebody responded to it like, well, shouldn't everyone know everything about what's coming out? Like, instead of just like, why is it that somebody wants just limited information put out there? Oh, we only wanna hear the good stories. 
right? That's like, it shows you're so dumb that you will be influenced by anything out there. And you think that you can only show the things that will influence people in the way that you want them to be influenced. Otherwise, they can make a decision for themselves and it would be terrible, right? Which just goes to show you don't trust other people's education, right? Did, didn't you guys remember during the debates when Kamala Harris said she wouldn't get the vaccine if it came out under Trump? Yeah, right. Do I remember that? Yeah. yeah. She said that. Like, what does that imply? That somehow the vaccine can be messed with and it could be actually bad or something or what? Maybe she was just saying it because literally she just didn't want him to get credit. So she wasn't going to go along with it. Maybe that's probably what she meant. I think also like it could come out and maybe it wasn't prepared. It, it wasn't completely ethical, you know? Right. But then is that because Trump was like in the lab, like doing secret experiments on it? Or is it because the very same company who would be doing it under Trump would be also doing it under Biden. So you're really kind of calling into question the fact that it might not be safe. Right. Yeah. So even she's saying there's a some way, a potential where it's not necessarily safe. And yet people are like, well, you shouldn't say that. She is the vice presidential candidate saying yeah. that she wouldn't take it. She didn't trust it. Yeah. But then it's like, if it agrees, if it agrees with your politics, you should trust it. You know, that's not the sign of an educated population. Right. That's the sign of literally people who just are programmed Mm -hmm. and then they respond based on what makes them feel a certain way. That is not real education. And we all have points like that within ourselves, but that's the whole point of this process is to go and find those points and remove them. Forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. Self-forgiveness is not something like that we've invented or that Bernard invented or anybody fucking invented. It's always been here. It's first of all, giving yourself the permission that you're allowed to do it. And when you have a whole story about this dude who oh, died on a cross to forgive your sins. I mean, it just like totally eliminates any point that anyone needs to forgive themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? When that's actually the whole key. It's like, if you broke into my house and beat up my family, I'm looking at you, Drake, because I know Mitch wouldn't do that. <laughs> but if, if someone did that, okay. And then they were like, oh, you should, I, I'm forgiven. I'd be like, I still don't trust you. Yeah. Versus if you within yourself are like, I forgive myself. I made a mistake. I'm not doing that anymore. That's what counts. Yeah. That doesn't mean I should just trust you either. Like, unless there's like evidence that I can see like, okay, you have changed, but I'm saying you have to change yourself. God forgiving, God can forgive you and you can still continue doing those things. People say, well, if I was really forgiven, I wouldn't do them anymore. It's funny. I was, I was talking with my mom and she has a friend who she was telling about, she was telling them about self-forgiveness and uh they said oh you don't have to do that if you trust in god you, you you're only doing that because you don't have faith in god i don't need to do that because i have faith in god and i was like ma what's what's her starting point point?" and my mom was like well because i'm like you know that there's shit that she needs to like work through you know her life is not perfect right and my mom was like no i could hear her when she was talking to me that's why i was suggesting to her to do self-forgiveness <laughs> and, and it's like when someone offers you a breath mint like, no, dude, it's like normally there's a reason someone suggests it. <laughs> Listen, Cam, you, you offering me this breath mint you don't need to take breath mints when your breath smells like god okay so <laughs> When your breath smells like mine, you won't need to take breath mints anymore either. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so something that's really fascinating. Um, do you know the? I think it's called Lord's Prayer or something. Yeah. Or like Father in Heaven. You yeah. Know, forgive us of our sins. So I, I actually, um, I had, uh, I put it in Techno Tutor, because so I was like, I want to unpack this for myself. Like I don't even know what Hallowed means, right? And I was like, let me just, let me like pull this apart. And I got to the part where it was like, um, forgive us of our sins as we forgive those that sin against us. Because it's like stuff that got programmed into me as a child. So I was like, I want to get this out and actually see it for what it is. And I was like, forgive us of our sins. Like, what? Like, by me just saying that somehow, like, by what mechanism is it going to work that this God thing is going to Also, like- why do you have to say it more than once? Exactly. <laughs> when does it work? yeah and i'm and i'm like okay and then and forgiving others i'm like wait is he forgiving just, what, what did you say Jake? which sins is he forgiving which ones yeah. <laughs> all of them and, and why don't you see any evidence of it happening like, yeah exactly yeah and so i'm just like 
holy shit like this is that was programmed into me i was brainwashed with that for the first i don't know 12 13 years of my life and it's like the ultimate abdication of of responsibility and it's like i mean i was just ignorant to it like my parents didn't know any better um but now i know better (laughs) and that's the point is like now i know better i will raise my kids differently they will not you know do the Lord's prayer or whatever. Maybe it could be redefined in certain ways. And like that, that could be some sort of understanding of like how, you know, so it's like an intention of like, this is how we want to live. The, but the, I'm pretty yeah. sure that Bernard made a video where he does the Lord's prayer, but then oh, really? says everything like we forgive ourselves and these kind of Oh, parts. interesting. That'd be cool. To you see. know, and like also, uh, you know how you were saying, they say like, uh, forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us, right? In some translations or some ways people say it, instead of saying sins, they say debts. Mm, I have heard it's like a like sin is a debt, right? Like, forgive us our debts as mm. we forgive those who, or they say, forgive us our trespasses. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There's like different things people will say. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, it's like, if we forgive ourselves, we, and, and we create a system where it's, everyone has what they need an equal money system. There won't be any more debt. We mm-hmm. have a debt-based system. Yeah. And then we're going around saying, God, forgive us of our debts. Forgive us of our debts. It's like, you think God fucking created banks? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, but, but no one wants to put those together because then they'll say, well, but I can't change things. Like you were saying earlier, that person, right, Drake? Where it's yeah. like, um, you don't need self-forgiveness because God will take care of it, right? Okay, but then what about the child suffering over here that's getting beat up by their uncle? Yeah. Well, that's because of humans that the humans aren't are doing that. That's not God doing that. Right. right. Well, but that's my point. Like if, a, if someone does something good, it's because God made them made something good happen. But if someone does something bad, it's because people need people are doing bad stuff. Yeah. Well, that's why they should change themselves. No, no, no. You don't need to change. God will change it. Yeah. Completely so circular. Logic. Where, where is the so there is no free will is right. essentially what you're saying. The only time free will ever is exercised is when you're doing the wrong thing. Yeah. It should be the other way around. Yeah. I, it, it's funny because when I was having that conversation with my mom, I was telling her, I was, I was asking her, do you think your friend thinks they can change? My mom's like, no. <laughs> no. That's why they're, they have to have God do it for them because they don't actually believe that they can change. Right. Which makes a lot of sense, but it, it's also why we think that the world can't change because a lot of people, well, not we, obviously, but like people in general think that the world can't change because they see that they can't change themselves and they're giving their responsibility of changing to some invisible God, right? But I I also wanted to talk about that, that one point that you brought up about debts. It's a really great point. No one ever considers like literally the entire world is in debt. Every country is in debt to another country and no one is considering that we created this debt. Like we're the ones who like, how does this even work? Where we're just saying, oh, we'll owe you money. Like, oh, you what? Well, hold owe on. We print what? money and then yeah. we charge interest on it. Where, Where does, does the money for the interest come from? Like, yes. how do you, isn't that by like definition not going to work? Yeah. And then we wonder why suddenly the economy crashes every fucking however many years like well it's built into the fucking says oh no it's it's just the market forces we don't know what's going on or anything meanwhile the people who really make money in this world are making money on the crash as well yeah because they know what the fuck they, they're they're in control of this i mean not in control per se but they're always on the side of making money they know how it works they have that education right but they're not sharing that with everybody else right and it's like so if there's people who always make money no matter what happens then there's no argument for why we can't create a system where everyone benefits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because it's not like everyone is equally getting fucked when things crash. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So we should all, we should realize there is an artificial system that was just designed within the context of self-interest. And if we change the design based on a different starting point, we can create anything we want. I mean, that's what it means to be creators. We are very yeah. powerful. That's what evolution really is. Yeah. Have you, have you heard this, that, 60% of the money that's in circulation was dumped in the last 10 months was put I saw in. That. Yeah. Where and, did and, that come from? Like, like the source of that information. Uh, I got it off of a uh, Tim pool. He was saying it. Right. Yeah. Um, but 
And Tim Pool's still on YouTube, so you know it's true. <laughs> it's it's, it's got to be. The system said it's, it's okay. acceptable. It's been fact checked. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, somebody else was also saying it in the context. I of, wasn't being facetious, by the way. Yeah. Like, seriously, the fact that he hasn't been kicked off means the system says he's okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but <laughs> somebody somebody else was saying it in the context of we're creating more debt and this is a problem. And they were, I saw them arguing with somebody else on Facebook and the other person was arguing, no, debt's really great. Like, you know, look at all the, the money that we have. And the other person was saying, yeah, we just dumped like 60% of uh, what, what's in circulation was just added in the last 10 months. The only reason why you aren't seeing hyperinflation at the moment is because the Fed has that uh, like 0% interest rate or, or whatever it is right now. But as soon as it goes back to the levels that it was in 2018, your dollar is worth nothing. Like bread is $30, you know? Um, but yeah, it, it, I guess I'm bringing that up because look, here Guys, are the people. I'm a fucking billionaire. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> you got that bread. Yo, I heard, I heard Jess is making that bread right now. Yeah, she's literally <laughs> making bread. That's where she was. Making. <laughs> I you see, think money you just grows on trees? I'm like, well, no, it grows in a field. Look, it's called wheat. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the point of that is the Fed, the people who are in control of the banks, the central banks, right? Those guys are in control of how you get to use your money and what it's actually worth and what you can actually do with it. And so regardless of what you're thinking right now, as far as, oh, this is just the way the system is. No, there are actual people in control of how this fluctuates up and down and, and what effect it has on the entire world. Because it's not just our, like this, the US doesn't live in a bubble. We affect literally the entire world. Like, can you imagine there's an actual person or a group of people, but it's gotta be a very small group of people who literally, they're the one who pushes the button and literally money just gets created. Yeah. Like some actual individual or, or, or set of individuals have that actual physical ability in the system to go push the button or, I mean, who, who does it? <laughs> does anyone even think about this? And then you want, people wanna argue that we can't create a system that's best for everybody. It's like, we already have a system that creates an abundance. Yeah. It's just not directed effectively, but that's not even the problem. The problem, the problem is not that there's not enough or it can't be created or whatever. It's that no one actually cares. That's the problem. And that's because of education. You know, I was looking at that and think about it because where do you hear these things? Like, oh, people would be lazy if there were, if, if we gave everybody money, people would be lazy. It's like, someone told you that. Yeah. That was your mind telling you that some programming, something you heard or read somewhere. And, you know, earlier we were talking about um, God and uh, if somebody does something good or something good happens, people say that's God. Right. But if something bad happens, they say that that's like human nature. Right. Yeah. But it should be the other way. Like, meaning if somebody, it, meaning it, it actually is the other way is what Dude. I meant to say. Yeah. What, I, what I'm saying is if somebody does something bad, why are they doing it? I just had a realization. What? The system lives in the mind. As in, it's, it's like, it's passed down through each person, through their mind. And so it's, it's not something that it's like this being, it's rather, it, man, it's like, it's within each person, it's evolving as it, as it comes out of your mouth and you say, uh, money doesn't grow on trees. Or you say, you know, if, if, everybody, if everybody had money, nobody would work. And that just gets keep, keep getting passed down over and over and over again. And it grows, evolves and like creates what we see around us because we all take that in. We all believe that and we all adjust ourselves to that. And we say, yes. And we just live that as if that is the truth, as if that is God. And so what you're saying right now, as far as God creates everything that's wrong versus how most people say, oh, everything that's good is God and everything else is human nature. No, it's that is God speaking through you. That's the thing that the invisible hand that's controlling everything is that which we allow through our minds in each moment, every time we open our mouths and it's some bullshit that we just accepted. It's, it's the system and its effects that cause people to do things that aren't best. So the only reason you would do something harmful is if you've been abused. 
So there's a system that puts conditions in place in your environment where you've been abused and then you will do something abusive later. So when people do things that are not best, it's actually because the system is doing it, if that makes sense. It's working through them. When some, if somebody were to do something that's actually best in this world, that's a self-willed fucking decision. You see, there's no God making you do that. Trump didn't get a call from God and God is working through him. He fucking stood up. Because if God really were the one who were doing it, he would have controlled a lot of other people doing it too and would have not, you see what I mean? He would have had a, why make it like, well, we'll, we'll get part of the way there, but oh, people don't believe in me enough. So, okay, no, I can't do it yet. You know, I got to start, got to let him fail a little bit and got to get more believers. It's like, does God fucking control things or not? That's like Santa which is Claus. does he only control things when they work out, but then even if they don't work out, then there's a reason for it. And it's like I, you would have to be literally so dumb. And so it's not even just dumb, not wanting to take any level of self-responsibility whatsoever. That you're just like making it up as you go along. Do you guys follow this? Uh he's like a rapper named Anomaly. Do you know what I'm talking about? I, I've he's like that. young guy, he's got kind of long hair. <laughs> And uh, I'll, I'll send you some links later. He, his, his name is spelled like anomaly, but with, with a, zero a zero for the yeah. O, right? Yeah. He, he's, he's really interesting because he's been talking a lot on Twitter lately and on YouTube also. He has like channels and everything um, about, and, and by the way, he's a really good rapper. Like his music's actually really good. Is he a guy with the, does he have tattoos on his face? I know that's like a thing nowadays. No, 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 no. That's no, a, no, that's no, a that's not that guy. Okay. No. But you can look him up while we're talking, but, yeah. um, but he's really cool. And, but he, he, lately over the past like week or so, he's been talking about how Q was a bunch of bullshit. It's a big like scam and everything. And he would, he never bought into it in the first place, as far as I could tell. But he was like saying how like he was one of the first people who I follow who was actively saying, okay, guys, it's pretty obvious Trump is not gonna win this one. Like, let's stop playing the fantasy game of oh, it's all the plan, trust the plan. He's like, there's no plan, guys. Like, and he made this point. He's like, Trump's done more, and I'm not blaming Trump, I'm just saying what this person's saying. Uh, done more to advance all of the fucking medical tyranny of COVID and lockdowns and everything than anybody else. Not that he specifically created it, but that he didn't stop it. You see what I mean? Yeah. And from my perspective, I don't think there's much he could do. Um, Because when you look at what the elite are willing to do, they're willing to do anything. So like that whole capital riot thing, I'm seeing all this stuff now coming out that like they just like basically walked in there. And that they had changed the orders for like how they were going to protect the capital, like the police and everything. Like they they changed it, so they didn't. They could have they could have made it so nobody could get in there, basically, right? Oh, for sure. But, but they deliberately stood down and all this kind of other stuff, so they made it possible. So I'm not saying that it was infiltrated by Antifa. Maybe I don't fucking know. But what I'm saying is clearly, it's like the way I look at it. If I were Trump, it'd be like, look, they're willing to let people die and kill people, so. I could fight this, but I'm not going to win anyways. And they're just going to ramp up the, I mean, look what they've been willing to do over, over the course of this past year. Yeah. Right. So I don't, I don't blame Trump for any of these failures in the past year um, because it's kind of like you're seeing it worldwide, everybody. And the only thing that would happen if he fights it back against it even harder, doesn't excuse him, but I'm just saying, even if he did is, well, what just happened? Imagine if from the beginning, he was like, no, guys, this really is not what it seems like. And it's all bad. They, they just banned the guy from Twitter. Yeah. They would have just done it sooner. They would have just shut him down. They would have impeached him again. They had to wait until enough. they had enough control of everything to be able to do all this stuff. But I'm just saying, there's, like, you can't. it's not about blaming Trump for anything. But it's also like, it's not about excusing him. It's about realizing the context of what he can and can't do as an individual in mm. a system. It's the system that's in control. Doesn't matter how fucking amazing Trump is. Like he's, he's, he's got some real legitimate abilities and skills, but he's only one person. And there's this point within us that is always looking for a savior. Mm. Always looking for someone else who's gonna take responsibility. And yeah. because there is no evidence of God, it's like all these religious people just put all of their, and a lot of them, there's some of my religious, some of them feel like they've transcended religion. They're spiritual people. There's a lot of spiritual people into all the QAnon stuff, you know? Oh yeah. And they just put all this savior mm-hmm. stuff onto, onto oh, uh, Trump. I was going to say Jesus onto Trump. <laughs> right. But he's just one person. 
-hmm. And yeah, he does have more skills than the average person, but that's because of his programming, his environment, his genetics and so forth. Those are things that can be changed in a human being. And if you don't think you can, you can't change your genetics. Uh, what do you think the fucking COVID vaccine is? <laughs> it's like literally an mRNA vaccine that changes your genetics. Oh, guys, I'm reading this book. I'm probably about four or five chapters in right now. I read it at night when Max falls asleep. It's called Zone 23, right? Definitely recommend it. It's, it's really, really good. And I think it was written in like, I want to say 2015, 2016, 2018, somewhere, you know, a few years back or whatever. It wasn't like brand recent. But it's about um, this kind of future. It's like the future of, it's like the year 2300 or 2500 or something like way out, you know? And society has become like this class society of the antisocial person. And then the person who's kind of in between and has to take medication to suppress their antisocial behaviors and tendencies. And then there's the people who are called clear or there's another word that they use as well. I can't remember what it is at the moment, but these are people who were born. So that, so this guy made this discovery where they could modify genetics, right? And they could like give children the eye color they want and all this stuff, right? So people could basically design the children they wanted. And then they figured out this uh, way to change this, ge this gene that caused antisocial behavior. So when they made that discovery, people all started getting that done with their future children. Like, you know, cause they would take the egg out, adjust the genetics or select the ones or whatever. And then they would implant it in the woman. So it's all artificial insemination and everything. And then basically they've bred antisocial behavior out of the human population, but there's still people alive who were born before that. So they constantly just have to take medication and it gives them this thing called detachment. So it's like, they don't feel any sense of like, wanting to harm anybody or anything like that. They're totally detached. And then there's the people where no matter how much pharmaceuticals they take, it won't have any effect on them whatsoever. They're still violent and antisocial. So they have to go live in like this other section with these like mega cities where it's like fucking slums basically. And they just like live and fucking fight and like do all this just, it's just like a wasteland, you know, like Mad Max style. You know, um, but there's like some government services and stuff, and some of them are allowed to go and work in the city with special permits, depending on what level of antisocial they are. But it's really fascinating because um, the part I'm reading about, it's like it seems like this woman, they not, you know, they're kind of revealing the story as you go, but she's uh, something happened where it's like the medication she takes doesn't work anymore, I guess, and so they had to put her into quarantine. So she's like in this quarantine, and they're like describing the whole thing. And this was written like at least two years ago, maybe more, but not that long ago. And it's just so fascinating because it's like, fuck, man, this is what people are arguing for. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and it's like, obviously not like they found some cure for antisocial behavior, but why is it that the governments want control over people? It's so that they can't challenge the government that the you know which who really owns the, the government is the is the corporations yeah the corporations don't want competition yeah so why wouldn't they use oh you're a health threat we need to put you aside and so forth you see what i mean oh you're never going to wear the mask you're never going to get the vaccine okay fine you can't be allowed to participate in society you yeah. see what i mean and people are arguing for that but if there's entities whatever corporations that are willing to do that to go to that level. Do you think that if you do everything they're asking, you're just gonna get freedom? No. Do you see what I'm saying? It's the, That's the problem is people act like, oh no, but we should do that because these people are a danger and so forth. But these companies, they don't care about you. Amazon, look at how their workers are treated and what they have to do and how difficult it is. Like the, the delivery drivers and so forth, right? Yeah. And now they're shutting down. Did you guys see the stuff about Parler, that app? Oh yeah, they're setting it down on Google. Google Play just completely removed it. Apple removed their what, app from the what app was store. Their, what was like the reason? Community standards goes against? They said yeah. because they weren't moderating it effectively and they allowed all the capital people, protest people to like oh. organize and so forth, right? And they're spreading QAnon conspiracy theories on there and so forth. <laughs> and then even when Parler said, okay, we'll put moderation in place, Amazon was like, mm, nah, we don't think that's, it's going to be, it's going to work. What Amazon do you or do? Apple? Well, no, Apple removed them from their app store. 
That happened already. Amazon then said, we're going to remove your web services. You can't, we're not even going to allow you to get hosted. Oh, oh damn. Oh, Saw that coming what? though. Yeah. That's crazy. So, yeah. so now they're having, they're scrambling to like figure out like how to change their service and everything. And they, you can't download their app anymore. No, I already had it downloaded. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. They try, already... try and log in. So now they're having to adjust their servers and so forth. I don't know if, if Amazon's already, they gave them like a deadline. It was like tonight or to, last night, or I don't know what it was. They gave them a certain amount of time, so, but they're so, basically saying, we're not hosting your, your, your service anymore. So guys, yeah. they fucking are the, they, they have the cloud service for like CIA and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's like I made this post the other day. They removed Trump because of the potential for inciting violence, yeah? Yeah. But you know, I looked up Lockheed Martin has a Twitter page yeah, and yeah. they're talking about the F-35. How is that not inciting violence? Like, <laughs> oh, but it's okay. The government's allowed to do it. It's like, well, Trump's in the government. He's the head. You see what I'm saying? Like logically, it doesn't make, yeah. it's not, it, it, it's a lie. Yeah. And people need to understand this. They're not being honest. It's just a lie. They're just saying it so that you'll give them, so you'll accept it. And you'll be like, yeah, 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 yeah. Those people are terrible. Mm -hmm. But what it happens whenever it's what you believe or what you want to do, no one is going to be safe within this because the whole starting point is control. I think this last year, 2020, made it really obvious that the corporations control the government. And you know, you could see that within, okay, all the businesses... All the businesses have to shut down except for big chain stores. You guys do whatever the fuck you want, right? And then all those businesses made tons, like millions, billions, hundreds of millions, right? At the very least, all of them, every single one, categorically. And everyone else, and like if you weren't aware before that, oh, okay, the corporations run the government, it's like, it's blatantly obvious now. And yet people still are trying to petition the government as if it's like, uh, they, or they blame the government as if it's their fault when the reality is we're all participating within this and all allowing those corporations to basically own everything and then defending them. You know how people will defend like, oh, no, the billionaires are, they're doing... Or they'll say the, the corporations, I mean, they, they're allowed to do what they want. You don't like it. You know, you should yeah. just go do your own thing or whatever. And I saw somebody posted, they did it like in a joking way, but they said like, guys, all, all parlor has to do is uh, set up their own servers. And like, they gave this whole technical complicated list of like all the shit they would have to do to basically be totally not have to rely on anything in the system. And it was like, that's all guys. I don't see what the big deal is. And it was like this like long ass list of all this complicated shit. Right. Yeah. You know? And it's like, Oh, okay. There's a book. No one's going to read it called Leviathan right, by Thomas Hobbes. Right? Yeah. We were just talking about this yesterday. Oh, we were. Yeah. yeah. In that book. Yes, and I were, he, yeah. Oh, okay. He explains how if you're a ruler, what you do is you put forward another group where it looks like they're the ones doing all the decisions and everybody puts their anger on them. Actually, uh, John Taylor Gatto talks about this, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, 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 and then you get all your anger out on them and they're never going to change anything. And even if you petition them, whatever, it's not going to change. So no one actually looks at who's actually behind things, right? So it's like, again, education. I mean, Thomas Hobbes, how long ago did he write this book? Like it was like in the 1800s or something, right? Yeah. Who the fuck is reading it? Why aren't they reading it? They can't read it. And when yeah. you go to school, what do you read? You read a bunch of bullshit and they're like, oh, what's the central theme of the, of the thing? You know, what's so funny is when you teach like reading comprehension and they're like, okay, now when you read this, see if you can figure out what the central theme is. That'd be like telling somebody, okay, you know, when you're in a conversation with them, you want to first listen to what they're saying. And then you want to think about what it is they're trying to communicate to you. And then you want to respond based on, okay, now I want you to listen to this person talk. Okay, now see if you can figure out what is the point of what they're saying. It's like, that's so fucking obvious. Yeah. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Like, it's the same thing as trying to teach a child. Okay, when you walk, you're going to put your foot forward. Okay. And then as soon as that foot hits down, you're going to start lifting the other one up and you're going to shift your weight. Nobody does that. Right. And yet every, most people's children learn to walk if they don't have some physical disability. Yeah. So why is it that they learn to walk and they can't learn to read? 
They're because not. the parents don't support the child to be able to learn how to process information in the time period where it matters. So nothing you're doing in school is education. It's the same thing as trying to teach a 15 year old who has literally never walked in their entire life how to walk mm. by explaining to them how to do it. Mm. That's what they do in school to try to teach you to learn how to read. It's like, if you're, if you're 13 or 14 years old and they're trying to explain to you, you need to go search for the main theme within a passage you just read. That should be obvious to you when you read it. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Like right now I'm talking, you guys are, we're talking. I don't need to teach you. Oh, you need to listen to the points of what I'm saying and think about it. It's like, you're automatically doing it because you can process what I'm saying, but this is the level of education. So in school, they're trying to teach you that kind of shit. They're still trying to teach you how to read instead of you absorbing all this information you know, mm -hmm. it's pathetic. Yeah. And like on this whole point of um, like parlor getting shut down, just the control, you know, increasing every single day. It's like for those listening, what's your role in this? Cause like, yeah, you can listen to podcasts, come out with one a week. I don't know how long this will be out for. <laughs> I don't know if and when we will get deplatformed, but what are you doing to build locally <laughs> so you can have a clubhouse locally so once a week you have your own meeting where you talk about this stuff locally because online it is going to reach a point where you're not able to be on there and communicate freely you're already not it's independent fact checkers have said this shit and that shit and you can't do this so it's like prepare now <laughs> like like fast forward five years from now, what are you going to wish that you were doing now? And then you think it'd be a good idea to do that. Right. <laughs> Some food. Really thought. good point. Um, and you made that point about, you don't know how long this will be on. Like our podcast will still be up. Okay. I just want to address that too, because this is for everybody. Do you want to live in a world where literally you have to censor yourself. I mean, if you're using the, a platform to literally harm people to like to, to coordinate violent attacks, that's already against the law. Do you see what I'm saying? So that, that shouldn't even need to be like a question. The problem comes in when they start saying what they think your intention is based on all this other bullshit. If you can't take it to court, and prove like this person did this, then it, that, that shouldn't be allowed, that shouldn't be allowed to be um, some corporation's decision. Because what if it's that, like, I mean, I, I, what if you advocate for homeschooling? And they're like, well, the problem is if you advocate for homeschooling, then that would enable people who uh, wanna teach their kids that they shouldn't social distance each other. So we can't allow that. So then literally they take your children away from you for eight hours a day and take them somewhere else where another stranger tells them some shit, even though, and is that what you want? Fuck no. You know, yeah. so it's not a matter of just because we're saying things that are clearly controversial that we think will be deplatformed at some point, which that's just obvious that that'll happen to everybody. It's like, think about it. When the corporations were totally in control, when there was no like, Easy, easy spread of information like the beginning of the internet it's like they couldn't control it per se right they didn't know how to control it yet right yeah back before that what was television like was it like anybody could just get a television channel and say whatever the fuck they want no not at all you see what i mean that's how the elite want the internet to be they want it to be influencers that they control yeah and that will self-censor or will just be censored that's where everything is heading and it's so funny because Bernard used to talk about this stuff back dec over a decade ago when we would talk and it's like, he said all this would happen. And it's not because he's special. It's just, if you're looking honestly at the situation and you're not just wrapped up in your own total self-interest of like, oh, but I'm getting that next promotion and little Johnny's going to private school this year. And oh, I can't wait for our Christmas plans and all this bullshit. It's like, that's totally fucking irrelevant. You know what I mean? Nothing outside of yourself and like what makes you happy. But if anything, 2020 really showed, like if you just focus on your own happiness, you're not in control of that. And again, like I said, I was talking about this earlier, you guys like, imagine the person who like, what really makes them happy is just that big Christmas gathering, you know, <laughs> it's like, 
<laughs> they couldn't even have that. Yeah. And they're like torn because oh, they really want to social distance and do the right thing, but they also really want to get that experience. And like, oh, but I gotta. It's like in World War II when we had to sacrifice. You know, it's like no, it's not. It's not like that at all. <laughs> You're just bullshitting mm-hmm. yourself. You're so just a sheep. This is fascinating too. So like a lot of uh, family and just people around me are like, you know, really into the whole like quarantine, you know, all that stuff. And um, really, really fascinating though. Quarantine. <laughs> yeah, because you can it's tell. Like a, it's like a lifestyle. Yeah, it, it, it is. It's like being a, a fucking Chevrolet, Chevy person or like you like the Lakers. It's like, I'm, so, I'm into the quarantine. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's like a fad in a sense. Yeah. And this, is, this is what's going to be so fascinating because I can tell from my conversations with them. They're like, oh, you should come over for dinner. But oh, wait, you were just traveling and like, I don't even know if it's 14 days quarantine, like maybe just 10. So like six months ago, it was like life or death. Like, is it 14 days or not? Because like, if we're going to meet for dinner, it's got to be 14. And now you can tell they're like sick of it. So like, I think I don't even know if it's 14 days. Like, so, th- so that's going to be fascinating over the next couple months. Cause I know that they're like very mainstream. And so that's thoughts that are going through a lot of people's minds. It's like this corn, like, uh, I don't know. I've been around enough people. Like, and, and even someone I know who's like immunocompromised, she's like very serious about this. Like she has a little kid, everything. And she goes, well, like even tonight, we're taking a risk, like having the neighbors over outside, like we're not social distancing. And I'm like, wow, this is whoa, really you crazy. guys. Whoa, look at you. Like, <laughs> this is fascinating. Like, like they're fed up too. And yeah. we talked about this. I don't remember when we talked about this, but it was very recent about like the future where, oh, maybe you guys said it last week on the podcast where, um, so let's take this to, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 years in the future where people are like at home. And your, their way of living is basically they're in fucking VR or whatever, and they're on their screen. Yeah. Where they're still going to be unfulfilled. It's kind of like when you get the new video game or the new PlayStation, you're like, oh, so sick, right? But then after you play it straight for like a week, you're like, okay, what's next? So this is, this is really fascinating where I don't, I, I wonder what the elite that are propagating this whole thing, what they've thought about of when people get burned out on the fear burned out on the quarantine burned out on like okay like fuck this <laughs> when the mainstream mainstream person gets fed up with it that's going to be really interesting what do you I guys think, think? We're, we're pretty close to that point because i just had my my neighbor over and the first time that i went to meet my neighbor because they moved in during covid first time i went to go meet them they were kind of like oh hey stand off and i was like all right um but i just had we're not gonna uh, hug <laughs> I just had them over yesterday and uh, they were like, oh, so, you know, um, what are your thoughts on this and that? And I was like, uh, you know, I just went to the grocery store. I got to go at night now because they don't let me go in during the day because I won't wear a mask. And they're like, oh, you're one of those guys. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh, well, you know, I just want to like, they, they wanted to get my reasoning. And then uh, the girl goes like, so just anecdotally, you know, I was working with my boss. And my boss had COVID, but she was wearing a mask. I was wearing a mask. And I didn't get COVID. And I'm like, yo, anecdotally, you know, I was at my mom's place. She had COVID. She was really sick. I was there. She wasn't wearing a mask. I wasn't wearing a mask. I didn't get COVID. She's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, That's my grandmother, like they live together. And my grandmother was like, huh, toughen up. You'll be okay. <laughs> so I think I'm going to take my chances, but just yesterday also i was with like i was with a friend for her birthday there were at least 30 of us out together just enjoying being out you know um obviously we had to do this at a private location because there's nowhere you can go (laughs) that they'll allow that but the people that i was that i was seeing there were people who were like previously i could see them you know, in their Facebook photos, wearing masks and things like that. And like, oh, you know, I can't wait to get together when this is all over is the messages that they would send me. And I'd be like, all right, I guess we're not hanging out. And then seeing them there is just, everything was chill. Everybody was hugging. Everybody was like getting really close together. Like, oh, it's so great to see you. They didn't care. How do they know just like three days before a new virus, nothing to do with COVID didn't get released 
from the wild and it's been spreading its way silently and has a 21 day incubation period. Dude, there are people there who they had tested positive for COVID like literally days before and like everybody knew, everybody knew and nobody cared. You know? Okay, I mean, even that, but you see what I'm saying? Like the cognitive dissonance. No like, sense. Yeah, it's cognitive. What I see it is more people are actually questioning it probably within themselves than are willing to admit. Because yeah. when you look at online, it creates an environment where it makes you think you're crazy if you do that. Like no one else is doing that. That's just you, buddy. You're but, the only one thinking these thoughts. Nobody else. Come on now. Because I even, so I went like for Technic Twitter distributors, for example, we have a Facebook Facebook group. I went in the Facebook group today to just like, like leave, leave a comment on something I saw. And the first thing that pops up is like new COVID information, like some bullet points. It's like, what the fuck does like this have Facebook? to do with our group? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Like they need to tell you everywhere. something. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's really the, why I say things will be more controlled because you can't, you can't have control. If that's your goal, if your goal is just control, you can't have control and then let everybody else think you know what I mean? And, and talk whatever they want to say, because that can influence people. You have to shut it down. So it's inevitable at this point. Right? That's why we've been saying like direct sales, meaning going to people face to face, one-on-one, taking that risk. Now it's like an actual risk people feel. It's not, but I mean, they feel like it is, yeah. you know, but, but the real risk is the risk of just being vulnerable with another person where you might, they, they might think you're, you're crazy but you have to know they're actually crazy. That's Otherwise it. you wouldn't be going along with all this stuff. That's such a great point. That's such a great point. Cause that's the, that's the risk that you feel within yourself of like, oh fuck. Like you're one-on-one with a person. And then like, just like, like I was describing yesterday talking to the neighbor, it's like, ah, I'm going to tell her this and she's going to hate it. <laughs> but you know, what else is funny is like, she was trying to make all these points. And then she tells me she's a, um, she grew up in China. I'm like, oh, well, that's why you think all this bullshit. <laughs> but but yeah. knowing that somebody else is wrong, like that's, uh, it's a really, the way I see it, because it's, it's uh, a fine line to walk, right? Of not just being straight up like, you're an idiot, you're wrong and all that. And completely, uh, you know, being judgmental about it versus keeping it to yourself and not saying anything that's still doing the same thing right it's, it's you, you're going to get the same result rather you're not actually going to help that person or or change that person or guide that person in any way and there you're not going to be making the moves or influencing in a way that's best on either side of that spectrum and it's just you have to walk that point of taking that risk of being vulnerable and saying what, what's really not on your mind, but really what's important in that moment, what's, what's real in that moment and, and help that person out of their mind, right? Were you gonna yeah. say something, Mitch? Oh, I, was just, I mean, a few things, but I think the, the, it'll all sum up in this is, I've been thinking about this a lot recently, like, Am I living in such a way that if I were to die today, tomorrow, next week, did I actually fucking make any real difference at all? Like, was my life in such a way where that potential that I had, that my mind is so good at reminding me, oh, I can do all these things. I can be president. I can do that. I can do that. Did I actually fucking do something real? Where if I'm not around, it still goes. And it, and it's, and it actually has changed because, cause like, it, I think it was maybe probably about a year ago when I really started looking at this stuff and like questioning the idea of like, what happens when you die? Like what's here? It's like, what's here? Like there ain't nothing else. And so wrestling with that within myself and then really being honest with myself of like, if I died, I made no fucking impact whatsoever. <laughs> like, yeah, I made some friends and stuff and sure, you know, I'm posted some stuff on Facebook, but like the system's going to continue being abusive and whether the being that's within me fucking disappears 
or whatever the afterlife is, or this being that is me pops up in a new being in a new human body somewhere else in the world. Like when I die, I, I don't know the mechanics of it, but how do I live in a way where I actually live on after I die in the sense of, did I create a system that actually goes without me? And that that system is actually life giving because the current system is evil. It's the opposite of life. It's destroying life and it's, it's pulling life apart. So what can I do that is like an expression of the life within me to uh, uh, keep um, expanding that and supporting that within people? And that's been like a really fascinating thing that I've been looking at. And like, as I've been asking myself those questions, I've got this whole new line of thinking that's actually like effective thinking of like, what does it really take to, to build that? And so, um, cause that's what, like, for example, Jesus, right? He died. <laughs> and what ended up happening with him? Oh, <laughs> the power what happened? What was happened? it? What happened, Jesus? <laughs> Bro, he died. He's dead, man. You didn't hear? <laughs> That's no, kind of like, no, someone's like, wait, on. Trump got kicked off Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine back then? They were like, wait, what happened to Jesus? <laughs> like, yeah, dude, you didn't hear? Like, oh, shit. You really? <laughs> and, and look at it. It's like, he's literally used this symbol of Jesus, the cross, right? It's in everyone's home and they worship it. <laughs> you ever look up the definition of a cult? <laughs> and and it's used as a symbol of control so these priests and pastors and pope and whoever use it to basically make a bunch of money from people and then own a bunch of real estate all around the world and maintain their power and it's like damn yeah that's like that's why jesus failed so i'm looking at that for myself i'm like damn every fucking moment counts every breath counts like make it count so that we together can make sure that that doesn't replay again and again and get worse. Mitch, I have a question because because mm-hmm. this brings up like a, a really cool point within me. Mm-hmm. And I, I know kind of your answer to this, but do you feel like you've changed since getting Techno Cheater, doing the process of DIP and uh, being a part of like self-perfected and, you know, all the things that, that we're a part of and walking this process in, in total do you feel like or do you know if you've changed your mind in any substantial way yeah i mean absolutely because yeah. like i like i see it and i know i have started changing and if let's say i die today right like i know within myself honestly i have made an impact to some extent my stuff is still on YouTube. I, you know, wrote a bunch well, of stuff well, down. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Cause, yeah. cause that's where I'm for going. Now. Oh, for now. <laughs> <laughs> cause, <laughs> cause that's where I'm going with this is like, all right, but that's, that's not necessarily just you changing. That's uh, a change that was initiated by, let's say uh, Cameron and Asif and everyone who helped you to walk this process. Right. And so it's, it's like an actual change of the mind like where we were talking about earlier, how the mind is the system, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's a, a small part, one, one mind that's been changed to start being removed from that system, not I, adding I to that system, right? Oh, and, yeah. Well, and it's like, it's like realizing that we still, it, I, I call it like purifying the system in a sense of like, it's not like you can just say, oh, I'm, I ain't using the system and like cancel all my bank accounts. Right, 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 right. No, that's stupid. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's, it's realizing who I am within the system. But that involves so much self-honesty. Like that's yeah. why I write self forgiveness every day. That's why yeah. I use Techno Tutor every day. Because it's like so much stuff accumulates. And I mean, I have 27 years of yeah. shit built up. Um, you know, plus all the generations of parents and everything. So it's like all this stuff is like hardwired into me, but I am definitely changing it. Now what I see though, and and this is, this is for sure how the mind is changing is now actually realistically looking at setting up the political party that and building the techno tutor business locally. Yeah. So I have an office of people where it runs without me. That's Mm -hmm. my goal this year. And so, 
and into where those people all have taken it on within themselves. Like I've taken it on from where like, I know if, if Cameron or Avery or, you know, you were to be gone, it's like, that's irrelevant in a sense, because I know that I can take it on and I can share this with others to do the same. And like, that's like, that's the real point. Yeah. Right. That, like that, that's living self-responsibility. That's what I, I agree with that. That's like the actual change of the system. Like, there's no changing mm -hmm. of the system until one, you change yourself and two, you help others to change as well in, in their minds, you know, changing, changing that mind so that they're actually physically going and, and doing something for real, as opposed to letting those mind construct thoughts that we all have be the guiding force that makes us do all the bullshit that, that we've allowed. Right. Yeah. And, and it, it's really cool too. Cause it's like, realizing that the mind is just a tool it's not to get rid of the mind it is to get rid of the ego but it's to use the mind as a tool that it is and then like what avery has told me for a long time that i'm really starting to see now is like when you're when you're being who you are is merged with your physical body that's when you really access your power so you're not like getting siphoned off by the ego but you're actually really here really able to direct things where every word has that impact like that's really cool because I'm I'm starting to notice that more and more now and like I'll just be able to go throughout my day and like I'm just here <laughs> like I, I'm, I'm not in the thoughts bothered about this thing or just said something this way or whatever it's just like I'm here and then when I do think it's like I'm getting I get these really awesome thoughts in a sense like oh, I should do that but then I just go do the thing I'm like I should make a live stream on that okay open up my phone do the live stream <laughs> or make a note for when I'm going to do it. And then I actually just do the thing. Like that's real practical living. Nice. One that's, of the last things that, uh, sorry, Jess, I'll just finish this real quick part. One of the last things that Bernard said to me when I was at the farm, like we were walking one time, it was just me and him. And he said, when you, and this is not something he hasn't said elsewhere, but I just, it had a lot of impact at the time. He said, when you let go of your individual mind, you'll gain access to your physical mind, which is far superior in all ways. Right? And that's really what this process is about. Everybody's trying to be like that higher self, next level, all that stuff. But the next level's here. It's not, it's not something you have to get to. You just got to let go of all the bullshit that's been programmed into you and that you've accepted. But then realize you don't just get to be a fucking super, all of this cool stuff and just do whatever the fuck you want with it. Self-interest. Because you don't get to access what's here until you let go of the self-interest. So instead of focusing on, oh, I want to be super, all this amazing stuff, just focus on what is it that stands in your way of creating a system that's best for all? Because to do that, you're going to have to improve a lot and have a much better life and have access and have more abilities and everything. But to get there, you have to remove all your excuses as to why you can't change the system. That's the and, path. And, and what, is, what is physical mind like from your current understanding? It's the physical reality. It's your body which no one even has any clue what's possible. Mm -hmm. But like, imagine what you think Jeff Bezos can do or Elon Musk can do. That's nothing. Mm -hmm. But how much, when he goes into a room, aren't things a lot easier for him than the that's average true, person? Yeah. yeah. And that's like barely accessing anything. Right. You know, but what we're capable of is so much beyond what we think we are, but we're so distracted by all this stuff of like, what you think is important, which is just based on shit that you've been sold. And now you're going to have to realize that the key to standing up in this world is become effective at selling. Because how else are you going to get through to people? You're going to have to go through their mind. You're going to have to speak to them. And when you start to remove these layers of uh, just bullshit, <laughs> what you notice is you start to see things that you, that it's just like obvious. So I'm not trying to hype something up like, oh, and I'm not, and I'm also not claiming that I'm there yet. What I'm saying is you start to see more and more ability that other people think is like, wow, you're special. It's like, it's just kind of obvious. Like what I'm saying is obvious right now, right? So it's not about actually becoming something superior. It's just about yeah. being what you actually are. But what is everybody trying to do right now? They're trying to play some game of making up their identity rather than just, actually being honest and figuring out who they are. 
Mm-hmm. They don't want to be honest with the fact that they who they are who they are. Sorry, they are who they believe they are because of what their parents and the media did to them. That's mm-hmm. it. You're not the thing that you believe you are. That's just a reaction to the environment that you were born into. That's it. That's not freedom. Mm-hmm. Freedom would be actually understanding what you actually physically are, what you're actually physically capable of, but then applying that understanding within the context of how to change the system so that's best for everybody. The one thing that really is coming out of all of the kind of trans, um, let's just call it social justice issues is a realization that the system is not designed in a way that's actually best for everybody. It's not supportive. It's just, we can't allow the solutions being proposed to be the solutions because those solutions are all just based in control because someone who's been abused will only abuse, even though they think that they're trying to to do the right thing. Right. So we can't allow that. We have to remove all the layers of dishonesty and so forth within ourselves and stand up and look at, okay, what does everybody actually need? First of all, let's take care of that. And then let's go forward from there. The elite aren't going to do that. They're just going to give out the crumbs. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's cool. At least people are getting something, but that's not enough, Mm -hmm. you know, and then we can use, you know, like this, the fact that people got money here in, in the States during the whole pandemic thing, we can use that. What do we know? It can be done. In Canada, they've, I think they've been getting money this whole time. I think they made it permanent. I don't know. I'm not really sure what the deal is there. Mm. Right. But in some countries, they're just making it like it's a thing now. Right. So it is possible. And um, there was that video we, I guess it wasn't on this. We were watching it earlier from Bernard talking about how it'll go through phases of basic income and so forth. Right. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, I think what the elite are realizing is that they're losing control of the system. So that's why they're just trying to control, 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 control everybody. And to answer your question earlier about where is it all going when they get burnt out, Mm -hmm. they have a plan for that too. (laughs) But it doesn't involve, (laughs) well, it's like, I don't know if I just want to go ahead and get us kicked off or not, but it's like, just do it. You know what I'm saying? It's called depopulation. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I've said this before. There's not too many people on the planet. There's just too many to control. Right. So if people think that the elite are just going to let people do whatever the fuck they want, it's not going to happen. And by 2020, we should all know that that's not what's going to happen. And we're just looking for those who really want to stand up and not, not try to go and do an insurrection or a revolution or some bullshit that literally is just fuel to the fire of controlling everybody. Instead, stand up and change. So people are like, wow, you're of value. Like for myself, I look at how people come to me and they like ask my advice or support for something. And it's like, wow, people actually see that I'm of value to them. That's pretty cool. Because that was the starting point when Bernard introduced TechnoTutor to us was like explaining to parents that when your child becomes effective with vocabulary and understanding, people will see them as someone who stands out, someone of value in this world. And I'm like, oh, wow, I'm becoming someone like that. And my children will be that. And the other people like you guys who are doing this process are becoming that. People seek you out because they want your support with things. And then the support you give them ultimately is take this on for yourself. Become that which can give to another person. So nothing we're suggesting in any way is a threat to anybody. It's, mm-hmm. it's really just making the world better through everyone being the change that they want to see. It's just that right now people don't know how to do that mm-hmm. because everything that they've been programmed to see is just limitation so we're in one sense we're opening people's eyes up to see that there's more possible there's more possible than they realize but then also you have to change in order to make it happen it's Mm -hmm. not just a hope and pray it happens Mm -hmm. right and that's ultimately why trump has not succeeded that's why jesus failed that's why every religious political movement ever has always failed and always will fail even what's going on right now because when you try to control you just create rebellion right? So everything that's going on is only going to add fuel to that fire as well, right? We're the only ones who have the solution because what solution can there be that's not the individual changing, taking self-responsibility and deciding within themselves to choose what's best and to automate that process within themselves to always choose what's best. And like that science fiction book I was talking about, it's like, we're still that generation that has to always be like checking ourselves and constantly like, oh wait, that's self-interest. Let me change that. Okay. That was a mistake. But if we support our children, and this is going to what you were bringing up earlier, Jess, 
if we support our children, they can be a generation or maybe the next generation where it's normal to them. It's totally normal. You just do what's best. You don't, you don't allow abuse. You don't accept it. You just do what's best. That's normal. You know, maybe you can talk a little bit about that, just that point you wanted to bring up about children and supporting them and so forth. Yeah. yeah. And whatever the other thing was too, if you recall. Um, well, I, the, I'll quick touch on the other thing, but then I'll, okay. I'll talk about that. So the other thing I'm was still that listening, guys. I was at the, I was at like a, the DMV or like someplace to, to get my license updated. And I was chatting with these two guys waiting in line, like two hours before they opened, because that's the only way that you can get in front of the line to be able to even get into the DMV. It's crazy. And one of the guys there was just like, you know, we haven't even tapped into all of our potential within our brains. Like we could be so much more powerful. Our physical bodies are just limiting us. And I was like, do you, I didn't say this, but I was thinking to myself, do you not see how what you're saying is like an oxymoron? Like you're saying you haven't tapped into your physical body's abilities and it's your physical body that's limiting you when in reality, it's your mind that's limiting your access to your physical body. And your physical body is the thing that's powerful, not your mind. And so it was just, it's just very interesting. And that was relevant to what we were talking about before. So that was just what I was going to touch on, but back to the, the children and like supporting them to be effective. I see it as absolute child abuse to not support a child to be as effective as possible, to not support them to have vo vocabulary, a high vocabulary by structuring the letters and the numbers and the words properly. And you are the reason, if you don't do this, you are the reason your child will struggle in life. Yeah. You're the reason that your child has dyslexia or whatever labels you want to put on it. Any learning disabilities, like you're responsible. You abused your child by limiting their capabilities because you were not willing to take on that responsibility. That's exactly what that is. And I see it so plainly. And there's so many people out there that have such cognitive di cognitive dissonance. They don't even see it. They're like, well, then they'll be, they'll be, lonely because they won't be a part of the majority or they'll be smarter than me why would i want that you know all this stuff and it's like you can't even see they it's can't like even little, see the so abuse evil. yeah so evil it, it's, it's so evil it's funny because like that point that you said um they'll be smarter than me why would i want that that's like pure spite right there right? that's why the elite don't want anyone to compete with them that mm -hmm. exact thinking yeah they're like, we'll lose control. That's what the parents thinking. So I'm glad you said that. It's like, that's the evil individual. Mm -hmm. Don't blame the elite. I'm not blaming the elite. I hope no one thinks that I'm blaming them for everything. I'm just saying, these are the people who are in control. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is what's happening. If we don't stand up and we don't support ourselves to change, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that we're any better than them. You see, we're doing the same things to our children. And to go to your point, it's like, Without Technotutor, the parent's not going to be able to do anything about it. And that's why they won't generally even consider it. Because it's like, well, even if I am abusing my child by not doing this, I can't do anything about it. So I have to just pretend like I'm not abusing it and justify it and all this stuff. But now it's possible. Because before, it's like you just got lucky to be born in an environment where you got that programming or you didn't. And then you were unlucky. But now you can be in an environment where you otherwise would have never been in any position of effectiveness in this world. But with Technotutor, you can take yourself and your child out of that point. Mm -hmm. At least you can do it for your child, right? And that's why going back to our point about Trump and all these other points, it's like, it's not just about going into politics and then becoming a leader and then trying to change things there. It's about also educating people for real. So mm -hmm. not so that, and, and there's a difference between brainwashing people and educating them, Okay brainwashing is when you take advantage of the fact that they can't process information and then you use forms of manipulation uh emotional impulsing imagery symbolism etc to get them to go along with something that you want without them really fully understanding why they're doing it but making them feel like it's what they want to do 
Mm. Education is when you give them the tools to be as smart as you are and see what you see and decide mm-hmm. to do it because they see it's in their best interest. Yeah. yeah. That's why we will succeed where no one else could have, because our point is not to brainwash people and only just manipulate them into voting to, for us and so forth is to give them the tools to see what we see yeah. so that we're just the ones who are in a position. Like if we wait for my children to do it, it'll be another 35 years because Max can't be president until he's 35 or, well, you know, 31 years, whatever, because he's four. But you see what I'm saying? That'll be a long time from now. So we yeah. have to be the ones to step up and do it. And for those who are watching the podcast, it's like, join us and stand up together so we can get this done instead of it being like a struggle. Because if it's just a few of us, I mean, what's the number that you need so that you don't fail? I don't know. But if you had the majority in Congress and you had the majority in the Senate and, and all that stuff and the presidency and all that stuff, you, I mean, at least you could get that part taken care of. Mm-hmm. But then yeah. you need a bunch of people who can see like, oh, when the media says this, that's a bunch of bullshit. I can see right through it. Just like mm-hmm. we can. Just like we can see when the media says something, oh, that's actually a lie. That's not true, mm-hmm. right? Does that like you were gonna say something, Drake? No. Oh, okay, good. No, okay. That was um, such an important. If if y'all listening did not grasp what Cameron just said over the past two minutes, listen again. Because okay, let me say like, it again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But, but this, it's like, I, I keep saying it over and over. We keep saying it, Drake saying it, Mitch, Jess, we're all saying the same thing over and over because there's nothing else to say. That doesn't mean we can't find other ways to say it, but we're not just here to entertain only. It's like, it's, this is the point. And I really look at it as it's something we're creating together. Yep. You know what I mean? Like yep. we're literally yep. all working together to make this happen. It's not just one person and they just need a bunch of supporters. That's mm-hmm. kind of what Trump did. Again, not blaming him. That's all he could do. And he, he did buy us four years of time. Can you guys imagine where we'd be at right now if Hillary Clinton was the president for the last four years? Bruh. Like, <laughs> do you, you know what I'm saying? Like considering what all the tech companies and everything are doing at this point, because they know Trump can't do anything about it anymore and fight them. Can you imagine what would have been done over the past four years? So, hey, that's cool. Awesome. We got some time, but we don't need to go, you know, we did that last podcast on despair, right? We don't go into despair about it because we're taking responsibility. If you're feeling like Q let you down or whatever the fucking thing is, it's because you've been putting hope and energy into something that's your savior. And that's what you need to let go of. And you can do that with QAnon. You can do it with AOC or Bernie Sanders or fucking uh god (laughs) you know what i mean like you can do with anything you have to stand up and take responsibility otherwise you are literally giving permission to the big tech entrepreneurs to control everybody because you're saying i will not change i will not take responsibility i will never do what's best and if you don't think it's going to happen like we're already giving permission as a society to enforce things on other people if they're a threat to the health and safety of other people. Yeah. What happens when your particular belief or opinion or whatever it is or secret desire or whatever becomes wrong think, <laughs> you know? And even if you feel like, well, that's never gonna happen because I'm milk toast, I have no opinions or anything. Do you just wanna live in a society where everyone is just like a fucking robot just going along and no one's saying anything of any value? One of the things I dislike the most is small talk. Yeah. How's the weather? Oh, pretty nice. Oh, can you believe it today? It's like, that's a thing happening. Okay, move on. Let's do, let's talk about something for real. Yeah. I know it's a way that we, it's like a, it's like a way of getting into something. I get it. I understand it. But I'm saying is imagine all of life just being small talk. Oh my God. Not ever saying anything so whatsoever of any interest or value because okay. it's like literally, oh yes. Did you see the thing on Twitter today? Yes, I did. Oh, look at that thing on Twitter. Cool. Goodbye. Oh, hi. You know what I mean? It's like literally just that's what the virtual reality will be, guys. That's what my life felt like before I got Techno Tutor. Like, like mm-hmm. I had some cool conversations with friends, don't get me wrong. Like we had some some moments, but you guys know about those moments. Those are like well, yeah. but- yeah, and it was like delusion. It was like, oh, what if we live in, in a holographic reality or some shit, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> but 
got to go back to work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But, but I notice it when I talk to like old friends, it's like, oh, there's no conversation here. Like, cause I know what I want to talk about. I know what's important. I know like, Hey, you know, you can change things. And as soon as I start getting into those things, it's like, I can see them just like their eyes gloss over. It's like, <laughs> okay. Like <laughs> I was lucky enough to spend, uh, to spend a few hours with some friends who I, I don't really get to talk to that much. And in the middle of the conversation, they were like, dude, you, you asked some hard questions, man. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to talk about something real. I was like, you want to switch the conversation to like nothing? And they're like, no, no, th- this is okay. But noticing like most people are not having those interactions. Most people, their life is small talk. I, or I, I don't know. I can't talk well, about most people, well, th- right? This is what I've been noticing too as well. Like having all sorts of, you know, like sales sales dialogue and just, you know, talking to people about stuff that matters. It's like, there's like this uh, time window where you can get people and you can have that conversation, but you can kind of see it when they get kind of full. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I've, I've been getting really good at that. And especially using TechnoTutor, it's like my ability to process information is like off the charts because it's like, I can see the little, like when people's eyes start flickering or like just the, the body language just shift the littlest bit. I'm like, Oh, all right. Like wrap it up and, and move it to the next thing. Cause you can only get so much in to people before the sponge gets full. And it's, yeah. it's kind of like what you're saying, Drake is like, you know, most people halfway through the conversation, they're like, oh, oh, does not compute, yeah. <laughs> cannot process. <laughs> yeah. But that's the- why, that's why the starting point has to be give people the tool. And I, I know you guys know mm-hmm. something for, mm-hmm. this for everyone else, but give people the tools to increase their ability to process. So yeah. it's not to say that we shouldn't then still explain things and so forth like everyone's just going to come to everything on their own i'm not saying that's what's going to happen because they wouldn't like if you don't read a book you're not going to know what's in the book you see what i'm saying but increasing your processing ability then you can start to have those conversations and people can become equal within that point mm-hmm. right and that yeah. that's how when you go into politics like look at the the level of dialogue in politics if somebody says hey we should take care of people people are like communist communist you idiot communist mm-hmm. Or, hey, I think, you know, <laughs> we, sh- we shouldn't have people coming across the border if they're not citizens or if they're not being checked at the border for, you know, whether they have ties to terrorist country. Oh, f- Nazis, you're a Nazi. It's like, what the fuck? That's, that's not a, a mature level of, of conversation or dialogue or anything. It's mm-hmm. just trying to get people riled up. But all mm-hmm. it ends up doing is creating more division. And what we really require, and so the problem is people will say, there's too much division in politics. We need to bring people together okay based on what yeah based on what because the person's over here because they have some bullshit opinions they've been assigned since basically birth and that's why this person's over here they're not actually interested in a real dialogue so to get people to come to a point of unity you can't do that artificially by just because what does joe biden do he just goes we need to have unity and this is a time for for healing and and unity and, and we need to be unified in unity and you're like okay what, what, what does that mean? Like, and then at the same time, you just spent the last four years calling half the country Nazis. Right. But what did the right do for the last four years? Spend the last four years calling everyone communists. Yeah. So there's, how do we have a solution that people can process and then come to an agreement on? Not based on it fits my pre-designed uh, preferences, but it actually makes sense. And to do that, we have to bring people's education level up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, otherwise we'll be living in that world like you were talking about where it's just all surface level conversations that are prescribed to you. Sounds you horrible. don't actually get a, a, a say in. You don't have, you're not actually uh, directing yourself. I was going to say not actually thinking. <laughs> Remember that JP Sears we were talking that's about? That's what I was just thinking video? of. He makes just... that point where he says like, you're, you're not thinking but then you're being told what to think. So you think that you're thinking, right? but really it's not you thinking, right? You're just, but that's mm-hmm. actually already what's happening. Yes. Already. Yeah. People just think that they're thinking. It wasn't the media necessarily only giving your opinions. It's your parents, it's your teachers, it's all this your other stuff. Yeah. And that's why whenever you think, oh, we can't have a world that's best for all because that would be communism. Ah, oh, you didn't actually think that thought. You just think you did because it sounded like you're a voice in your head. But there's another entity inside of you speaking in your head. It's not you. Because if it was you, you would question it. You wouldn't just automatically accept it. You would actually, and then if you're challenged on it, and then you go into some cognitive dissonance, that should really show you 
that's it's energy based. It's like it's like having a treasure chest and you have all these like trip wires and like electrical shock devices. So if you try to open it, it like shocks you. So you can't really ever see what's inside. So you have to be willing to like go through that experience of like, wait, I may not like what I see, but I want to know the truth. I want to know what's what's real, you know, and that's what most people are not willing to face within themselves of like, no, I'm a good person. I believe in this. That makes me a good person. It's like, you're not a good person. doesn't matter that's- whether you're a communist or a capitalist or a fascist or whatever. You're accepting a system. And it's not two different systems. It's not like there's the Trump system and the Democrat system. It's all the same fucking system. It's all one system. We're all accepting all of it, whether you're on the right or the left, all the negative things that are happening, whichever side you blame, it doesn't matter. It's still the same one system that you've been supporting your whole life and participating in. That's such an important point too you bring up about, um, it's like a question that we all have to ask ourselves. Like, really look at it. Do I really want to know what's going on in there? Like, do I really want to know the truth of what's going on inside? That's like the self-honesty test. Because I remember like about a year ago was when I, I, I mean, it was kind of like when I found Jen in your wishes, your command. And he talks about being really teachable. Like, are you, are you willing to give up the thing that you love? I was like, oh yeah, 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 I'm willing to give up the thing I love. Oh wait, but like, I want to go smoke weed with my friends. (laughs) Like totally cognitive dissonance, right? And then, but that's such a key point for us all to look at and everyone listening is like, do I really want to look at what's going on in there, whatever it is to actually know the fucking truth. And you have to look at that for yourself and answer that question for yourself. Because if you, if you aren't willing to do that, well, one that shows you about yourself, you're dishonest. (laughs) And, um, Two is when you finally do have that willingness to accept change within yourself and, and you are willing to be self-honest, like that's the moment that opens that up for you. And then you can start acting on that. And then it keeps going and going and going and that will free you, but it requires you to be willing to do that. So cool. You guys have anything else for, for this time around? No, I think we made the points. Um, why don't we just, who somebody want to do the normal filler thing at the end where they can of course yeah self-perfected.com <laughs> look at the principles join the facebook group participate in the facebook group do the do the video challenges connect with like-minded people um because who knows how long we're going to be around online but we will be around in person and you know that point people. you said about look at the principles do that first Mm-hmm. before you join the group if you're seeing this and you haven't joined the group or anything go actually look at self perfectedcom and read the list of principles before mm-hmm. you join the group that will save you a lot of time because you'll realize what we're really talking about this is the first time you're ever being exposed mm-hmm. to it yeah and um from there yes yeah, so we have free resources on the website i think we have the store linked to the website if not we'll make sure that it is is that a and sweater or a shirt you're wearing sweater more that one actually on the shop Nope. Limited. No, release. that was one of those special. We'll do another. We'll do another limited release later on. That one's actually pretty cool. I like that. I know it's good. I like it too. <laughs> no, but another point is, like, if you are hearing what we're saying, and even a part of you is just like, I'm, I'm ready to start this process. Then do it. Then do all, like, go all in. Okay, I don't, I don't want to be connected to someone who just wants to hear what I have to say to see if it feels good. I don't, I don't want bullshit. Okay. Like I want people who are serious, people who see it and just be willing to change, be willing to learn and be willing to take responsibility because we don't have time for bullshit. Mm -hmm. We want people who are serious about this. We want people who are ready. And if that takes a bit for you to go through that process of really understanding, that's one thing, but it's the willingness because if you're not willing, I don't want to talk to you. Don't talk to me. But if you're willing, reach out. Let's do this thing. Because would you rather have it anyway? Would you want us as the people who are like spearheading self-perfected to be like, yeah, join us. But it's cool if it's it's if it's half-assed. <laughs> like, fuck no. <laughs> you want people who are all in, right? <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's, that's what it's about. That phrase, we don't want pikers. If you really want this, yeah. you listen, you join us, and you do. Yeah. You do you take the action. Yeah, in your life will radically change for the better you it will become best 
mm-hmm. but you got to apply yourself. And if you, if you're doing it and you trip and you fall on your face, guess what? You have a whole group of people that have got you back as long as you walk with us as equals. It's the best decision you could ever make. So that's it for this week. See y'all next week. Thanks for tuning in. Share this with people who need to hear it. Peace. Bye, everyone.